Hey guys, what's up, Grimish and Tam, back with another video, and today we have another episode of Tennessee Titans franchise. Today we are taking on the LA Rams, they are coming to our home stadium in Nissan. We have a little bit of a home game stretch here. I'm pretty sure we played at home, because we did wear our alternates last week as well, so we have a three-game home stretch right here, so let's go ahead and try to get this done, of course. Now, of course, in the last video, Derek Wesley and Will Levis, two of our top players that we're looking at to go forward and become those pillars of our team have been upgraded to superstar and we have a ton of superstars now on the team of course we still have Chris Malone and Dorian Dixon from last year's draft class Tajay Spears just becoming the greatest fucking running back in the history of mankind Josh Wiley I'd hope would go up to star but then again with his age and just uh, development over his first three years I highly doubt he'll get star this offseason Keenan McIntyre I would expect to get star in the offseason as well um, I'd hope Quinn Ayers as well would get star the team's in a very good spot right now. Um, we just have to go win games now at this point and go compete. We have a ton of talent and depth all across the board. We just have to go play. It's as simple as that. And going against a team that is 3-7 and seven in the Los Angeles Rams, we have to go out there and win this game. This is a game that will really determine how we do things going forward. You know, this could very much give us control of the AFC, of course. We're going to go to standings real quick, and I'll show you guys just what I mean. Uh, we're one of the only teams with nine wins. Three teams have nine wins. It's us, the Bills, and the Packers. We're not going to worry about the Packers because, of course, they're not in our conference, so it's not that big of a deal. We beat the Raiders, so we already have the tiebreaker against them. The Bills just lost their second game, so this will determine if we can fully take control of the AFC. If we lose this game and the Bills win, it, it's a tie going into that week, and then it comes down to a bunch of different things, you know, head-to-head -head matchups, divisional matchups. Uh, points for versus against all that fun stuff. Our offenses went crazy. We've had some very good performances. Granted, the defense has stepped up. One thing I am looking to do is slow down Aaron Donald. Every time I play this motherfucker, he destroys me. Him and DeForest Buckner are the two best D tackles in Madden. Now, of course, yes, Aaron Donald's the top D tackle every single year, and he's fucking you know a 99. And thank God he's going to be retired in Madden 25 because then I don't have to use him and stuff. But, well, go against him at all. But he's going to be a game wrecker. Granted, I don't know if anybody else is really on that team that we have to worry about at this point. Um, we'll go to, because I don't think you can go to other teams adjust lineups, which I, which I think would be a cool little feature is being able to maybe scroll to a different team and seeing their adjust lineup, seeing, you know, who's out, who's in, who's starting where and why and all that fun stuff. But we'll go go ahead and check out their team real quick just to be sure of what we're going up against in the Rams. Um, a rookie quarterback, Matthew Stafford, has regressed beyond, you know, worthiness. They do have Kyron Williams and Derrick Henry still on the team, so they definitely have a one-two punch there at running back. They have some very good receivers. They got a rookie in Frank Harden, Dontavian Wicks, Cooper Cup, and Puka Nakua still. They also have Diami Brown, so they definitely have some speed at that position. They don't really have have a decent tight end outside Tyler Higby. Chuma Adoga isn't very good. Steve Avila, Aaron Brewer, Kevin Dotson, and Rob Havenstein. So I will look for Keenan McIntyre to have a big game against Chuma, Chuma Adoga, uh, or if for some reason they bring in uh, Ben Cleveland, he could also be a matchup that we would like to exploit. I'm not really worried about John Kaminsky. He does have speed, though, so if he does break through, that will be a problem. Kobe Turner has developed into a very good defensive tackle. So they do have a decent punch on that D-line. Michael Hoyt's fine enough. David Long and Ernest Jones, and then Brian Young and Nick Hampton. So they definitely have a little bit of weapons. I will like to explore, ex exploit this uh, defensive pass unit, or pass coverage unit, because their top three guy, well, Two of their top three guys don't really have a whole ton of speed. Brian Jones and D. Alford just do not have a ton of speed. So we might be able to exploit that a little bit, especially with Max Smith having to play a little bit more with Bo Melton's injury. That could be a possibility. And hopefully the deep ball can get going here as well. Kyle Duggar really isn't that great of a coverage guy. And Russ Yeast just not a very good overall and slow. It just just to be expected, you know. I, I think we have a very good opportunity. This should be a relatively easy game. We do have a trench boost and some upgrade players to take care of before hopping into the game. I'm going to leave franchise staff points alone for now. I'll figure that out in one of the other, you know, days. 
The amount of rushing yards will determine how much XP your offensive line gains. I would like to run the ball then. Um, as, as good as Will Levis has played this season with 19 touchdowns, only two turnovers so far this season. Uh, if, if based off of how many rush yards we get, will determine how good of the offense, you know, gets a boost. I, I'm going to run the football. It's as simple as that. Hassan Haskins, Tajay Spears are going to be the two running backs. And of course, Taysom Hill filling in at fullback with the loss of, of course, Chig Aquanquo. Um, we lost Chig for the season. He's out for 27 weeks, so he is done for the season. We also put OJ Howard on injured reserve and brought Drew Sample back in. So, you know, we're also going to be missing that third guy. So we're, we're going to see Taysom Hill at fullback. We're going to see a little bit of Drew Sample at the third tight end spot. He's going to come in and provide good blocking help. So we'll help out a lot. Reed Blankenship, a guy that just no teams wanted and we ended up bringing back for relatively cheap. Still got, holy shit, a lot of upgrades. Okay, I'm not going to cover all these upgrades. I'm going to be honest. I think I'm just going to cover most of these off screen. I'm going to go through and get maybe the important ones done on screen real quick, and then we'll hop into the game. Um, Keenan McIntyre has played phenomenally well. He's still only listed as like a 71 rush end, which is very weird, but he's playing above it time and time again. Now, yes, are there some times that I hop onto the guy and help him out? Absolutely. But he's played, he's played phenomenally. Derek Wesley. Now up to an 80, so we will be able to get him uh, some more abilities. He does have two. Recuperation is fine for now with which, with how low he is uh, overall. Let's see here. I don't really care af about a lot of these. I think I'm going to go strip specialist, which would be cool, but I'm going to go reach elite here just for now. Help him out in the run game just a little bit more. Lindsey Goodwell has been a solid piece of this offensive line. Um, he has actually been phenomenal this year. One of the only guys to really stay healthy. I think the only time he missed was he didn't finish out a game for us, which is perfectly fine. I'm willing to take that every day of the fucking week. I'm going to go deep threat here on Tyler Linton. As we don't have him playing in the slot just yet with Bo Melton and Max Smith being such good slot guys, I'm not too worried about upgrading his slot as much anymore. Um, Will Levis, I'm going to get improviser. I need him to be able to throw under pressure. Not quite to that. 80 overall yet, uh, plus 3 temporarily boosting him up to that 81. So out of 78, so just a couple more overalls, and then we'll be able to get him that extra spot. Um, I did go ahead and give him, I forget what I gave him. It, it wasn't anything special. It's not going to change how he throws the football all that much right now. So I'm not too worried about it. Max Thurmond as well, another guard that's playing well for us. Could look to have an increased role over the next couple of years as we are going to, are expecting to lose a couple of guys. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these guys done off camera, and I'll see you guys when we hop into the game. A lot of these guys, like I said, they're good players. They might see some play time, but it's nothing too special right now. So yeah, we got to go take care of business here in Tennessee. Another Sunday 1 p.m. game, so it's nothing special. But going against a team that's this bad, we got to go out there and play well. Caleb Farley, great season stats so far for him. Seven interceptions, one touchdown, 14 tackles. Not asking him to do a whole ton in the you know rush department just because of our linebackers being good and our defensive line finally being able to step up and make plays. Should be an interesting one. They have a very good offense. That D-line is going to be coming after us all day. We have to be able to protect Will Levis, and our defense needs to step up and play very well today. We need the pass rush to show up. That is one thing that has, has really changed our success rate this season this season is just our pass rush finally okay so first and 10 they are starting the rookie like we saw in the depth chart so he'll come out onto the field the interior part of this o-line is something that is going to be very strong but i think our defensive interior line is very good especially with jeffrey simmons nine touchdowns six picks 2100 yards on the season almost 2200 for the rookie so he's having a decent year nothing too spectacular though and especially considering the weapons that he has you would think that the stats would be even better than what they are First and 10, they're going to start off with the game with a handoff to Kyron Williams. He'll be downhill. And yeah, that's an... And Amani Hooker's immediately down. <laughs> oh, okay. I see how this game's going to go. Uh, and they definitely have a good running unit. And Derrick Henry's still a superstar. So he's going to be able to make people miss, make us really work for it. Thank God. I was going to say, Dontavian Wicks, he held on to that? What? I fucking hit him midair and he held on to that. Are you fucking me right now? First and 10 at the 45. They're immediately coming out. This offense, like I said, going to be good today. Brendan Davis can't bring Derrick Henry down and Derrick Henry gets 10. 
Three straight plays, three straight first downs for this Rams offense. Like I said, I, I'm not surprised by this. I'm not surprised. I'm not going to say I'm not surprised that we're not stopping them. It's more I'm not surprised that they're coming out and being able to have such great success. They have a lot of good talent on this team. Jeffrey Simmons there, one on one with Steve Avila. He should be able to win that every single day of the week, and he does. It's the same in 13. Our first negative play against them. So now we just have to come out. We got to hit them again. Send the defensive line to the right side. I would like to see them match up a little bit better against them. Quentin Ayers making a tackle on Cooper Cup. Quentin, you have to stop him today. That is your number one goal. Like, Cooper Cup cannot beat you. That is one thing that cannot happen. Cooper Cup is not that guy anymore. He is not the Triple Crown winner anymore. Oh my god, Shire just left Tyler Higby. I literally peeled off a of Tyler Higby because Shire was just sitting there underneath of him. And then as soon as I peel off to go contain the scramble in a different throw he throws back across his body towards him and Davidson can't keep up with fucking Higby come on we might have to go somebody else at safety today for if, if we have to run a bunch of man we might have to go somebody else at safety I will admit that so we'll, we'll see though hopefully we don't have to and there's Wesley getting home the superstar rookie already he has played phenomenal, and he's going to continue to play phenomenal now with that superstar dev trait. He's going to easily progress, and he's easily going to have some very good games for us. There's Derrick Henry, Shire coming up with the tackle. Down to the four-yard line now. Yeah, Derrick Henry just going to be an issue. Um, first time having to play him since we traded him away. This is season three, and this is going to be the first time that we do have to trade him. I mean, uh, play against him. So, third and goal here, though. I'm going to send the house with Shire. Can't quite get there. He he would like scramble to. I don't know. I was just so indecisive there. I'm like, if he dumps it off to Henry, there's no way we're making the tackle. So I was just trying to stay in the pass lane while also trying to get the sack. E either way, it forced fourth down. Yes, the sack would have been nice to add to the stats. But ultimately, we get the stop only letting up three. Tyler Linton up to the 28 where the offense of Will Levis the new superstar in Tennessee will come out onto the field for the first time today. 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns, two picks. He has played phenomenal when he's been available, of course. He has been knocked out of a couple games, so he hasn't had all the time in the world. But when we have seen him, he's played great. Aaron Donald's not on the field. Okay, so another situation where it just fucks up with Aaron. Yeah, because it's a 3-4 and he's the right end. He's not on the field. Because Madden and EA don't know how to program their fucking game. If you have a right end in a 3-4, they do not play. Your, your, two, your top two D tackles and your left end play, by the way. So if you ever are wondering why your right end's not in, that's why. Put him at D tackle or put him at left. But, I mean, hey, that's going to help us out. Since, you know, our main objective is running the football here today. To get us yards, to get us XP for this O-line. So... Holding isn't going to help us out right now, though. Uh, holding play, holding on the first play from the backside guard, just that's not going to be accepted, acceptable, Dorian. Um, you're going to have to play better than that. That's as simple as that. Like, just let him beat you at that point. I don't care. Like, if uh, I'd much rather have you ha get beat than me having to. Granted, we didn't earn anything on the run, so I guess it's not completely terrible. Second and 20 now, but but then we immediately have to go to the pass game like we are right now. So, you know, me not being able to run the football right now kind of does suck. Second and 20. Look in Burks here. It looks like man almost off rip. Five man front though, so we do have to get rid of the ball relatively quick. Yeah, it's man. Burks is going to beat his man and just Levis just pressure in his face. I think Donald breaks free almost immediately against Peter Skaronsky. Just nothing going. Jesus, we're going to start this game off so fucking poorly. Third and 20. We're just going to throw this screen pass. Let the O-line get out there. Tyler Linton, and then nobody's blocking. I think that's Michael Hoyt. I, I, I don't know what to do there. Like We set up that play perfectly, and the one guy that can stop it there gets through. I, I don't know what else to do there. Is it roughing? Or, I think it's just running into the kicker, so it's not like it's going to matter. No, roughing the kicker. We get a first down. Oh, my God. So, two flags here on this opening offensive drive for the Tennessee Titans, and we immediately get the ball back. Going to run halfback stretch to this weak side. We get a block from Traylon Spears up the sideline, trying to make the safety miss, and he does. 
21 yard rush there, immediately restarting this offense. PA tight end seam. Gonna hit him with a play action, see if we can get this D line to bite. Not really. Gonna roll with Will Levis. Trying to find something, can't find anything, just gonna have to throw it away. One for four on the day. Jesus, that's tough. Um, let's go flood swap here, but I wanna flip it. I want the open side of the field to be this out route. And as well as Tyler Linton being on this out route could be very dangerous for us. Then Spears out on an out route as well. Yeah, Tyler Linton open. Catch. He has to make a diving play. Not a great ball from Will Levis there, but still, nonetheless, comes up big. We go outside zone here. Run away from Aaron Donald. Hand off Spears. Having to cut back because of Kaminsky. Kaminsky's playing right edge right for them as well. Instead of one of their young guys, they're having Kaminsky. Okay. Had to cut back inside. Kaminsky forced Tyron Smith upfield, and Aaron Donald just there to be able to clean it up. Block there from Josh Oliver. Decent block enough by Tyler Linton. If you could have held it for a second longer, we would have had a little bit more yards. But the defense was starting to close down on him, so it's not the worst thing. It's not like that block just kind of changed everything. This double team from Skaronsky and Malone has to work on Aaron Donald, by the way. It does. It works enough. Hassan Haskins and just, I don't know what the fuck that back juke move is where he just like ran into him. Like just run your own guy over if that's the fucking case. I don't give a fuck. Run your own guy over in that situation. There's no reason to slow down and back juke like he did. Going to go for it on fourth and one. I know this is kind of risky, but Spears downhill gets the first and more. First and 10 now. Going to go back to the line immediately here. And go wheel spot post. Wiley could be an option here on this corner. Okay. Nope. Cool. Dude, every, every fucking time. Every time I try to get that fucking tuck and run thing to work, when I'm actually trying to get out of the pocket, it doesn't work. And anytime I'm just trying to throw a fucking high ball to a tight end, it fucking makes me run. I'm going to go bench here. Second and 23 now after that sack. Going to keep Spears in. Going to send the O-line left. Try to help out on Aaron Donald. Wiley, Burks, main two options as well as the receivers underneath. Yeah, Burks, one-on-one. -on -one. Can he win his rep? He, he did. He won his wet rep. He stacked John Johnson and just not a good throw there from Will Levis. Will Levis just, with Aaron Donald in his face, just has not been able to hit a pass. Going to send Wiley up the seam. Spears underneath. Linton could be open. Max Smith is my main option, though. And just... You know, it sucks when you're trying to run the football and you get stuck behind the chain, so then you have to throw the football and their D-line is just eating you alive. And especially not even the guy that you're expecting, like an Aaron Donald. Like a John Kaminsky just eating your butthole. That kind of sucks. Second and 12 now. Defense slowly stepping up here on this run unit. We do have... Yatir Gross Matos in, trying to help add a little bit of pass rush here in this w wild look. And Shair just gets stuck on a wide receiver. Why in any world would Shair, even in this situation where I'm calling a certain formation, why would he be in man coverage on a wide receiver? You would definitely shift it over to where he would be on the running back. But I, I guess I'm stupid. So there's Jeffrey Simmons again. He He's going to have to be the main guy to slow down Darren Henry at this point. If he's not the guy, we're not going to have a whole ton of options. It's just as simple as that. Going to hop on Evans. We're going to play man coverage on Kyron. We need McC McCreary not really being targeted yet on that Puka Nakua. Tyler Higby there underneath. Six for seven, 76 yards. Three receptions to Tyler Higby. All resulting in about 10 yards. That one only resulting in five, but as has an average of 10. So third and five. Screen pass here. Get there. Can't quite with either unit, but it does get shut down. Fourth and five. Got to... Forcing a punt here is fine by me. They're scared of Tyler Linton, so they're going to punt the football out of bounds, and we'll take over at our own 23. That's fine by me. If you're, if you're scared of Tyler Linton, whatever. First and 10. Linton is main option here. Wiley underneath as well. Just going to take off and run with Will Levis. He's able to escape pressure. Gets 12. Such a good athlete for us. I'm going to send Tyler Linton on this reverse. Fuck it. First and 10. And off Tyler Linton. He has the speed. If the blocks are there, he has the speed. And he'll pick up a good chunk of yards there all the way up to the 50. Just decided not to take the hit. Get out of bounds. He, he wasn't going to escape three guys, at least in my opinion. So I figured, you know, may as well just take the out there. Not really get him in trouble. First and 10. 
dropping back. Tyler Linton open underneath. Not really. That linebacker reacted a lot faster. I didn't love where the ball was thrown either. Halfback tight end angle. I'm looking Amos here. Looking Amos to Wiley. Not really anybody. Fucking Spears was open. And then Tyron Smith just got beat by Byron Young on the inside. Just like handedly too. We, we have negative six passing yards because of how many sacks we've already taken today, by the way. So uh, that's fun. I'm going to... Fuck it. Let's do this shock option. Let's see if Max Smith can win his rep. He does, but it's zone, so not like it's going to matter too much. Fourth and eight. Just passing units just isn't there. The O-line's just not holding up. And it's not the guys that you're expecting. It's not Aaron Donald. Yes, Aaron Donald has definitely changed some throws and stuff. But it's not Aaron Donald coming up with the sacks. It's Bryron Young beating Tyron Smith on the inside. It's Sean Kaminsky beating a double team. Out at the 19, so we will at least get an inside the 20 punt for Ryan Stonehouse. But not a great punt in terms of just averages and stuff. Going to come out in this 3-4 again. Got to slow down this run unit. Jeffrey Simmons, like I said, has to be the main guy. He should have outside zone there. I don't know why it's not activating for him. He has outside and inside stuffer, so I don't know why that's not activating for him. I don't know why it's just not doing anything. Hop on Shire and cover Derrick Henry myself. He's not really going out on a route. And there's Mac Mark Vickers. Mark Vickers, a guy that I would love to get more involved. It's just with the depth of the CB room right now, it's hard to get him in there. Especially with McCreary actually playing well this season, it's kind of hard to just be like, oh, hey, we're going to bench McCreary because Mark Vickers is on a rookie contract and you're going to be off contract this year. You know, it's kind of hard to do that. First and 10. Two minute warning though here in Tennessee. 3 3 here. Both defenses really coming to play today. Just need our offense to step up. Simple as that. First and 10. Going to hop on to Shair, cover the middle part of this field. Kind of just. Bait them into the throw, maybe. McCreary underneath on Henry. McCreary coming up big with a tackle. Just kind of uses his own weight against him. Shire, what the fuck? Pukanuku is in the backfield. Okay. And that's how they're going to get him involved, by the way. <laughs> they, they put Pukanuku... They're putting Pukanuku in the backfield. What is this fucking formation? What is this fucking hurry-up offense? Tyler Higby's out at wide receiver... Henry's in the slot at tight end, and now Cooper Cup's at tight end. <laughs> I'm so com genuinely confused right now. Derek Wesley getting home. Again, two sacks on the day. Beating Havenstein. Not the guy I was expecting to be able to beat all day. Maybe H Havenstein's out, out. It looks like it's still Havenstein, so I don't know what's going on there. Gonna hop on a mini here, I guess. I was. I figure I'll just hop on probably the worst D lineman out of the bunch. 30 seconds. They're just letting this clock tick now at this point. Fuck it, if you're going to let me have the time, I'm going to hop on McIntyre try to win his rep. Come on, speed rush, speed rush, speed rush. Can't quite get there, Evans. And he lets Henry just get... He, he literally shuffles his feet as the ball's in the air. Make it make sense, Madden. Make it make sense. Just have Evans drop into a zone. I don't really need him rushing. And there's Wicks just beating... Farley, 11 seconds, 10, calling timeout here. They're in field goal range now, so it's now just up to our defense. I, I almost want to send pressure, but with with how good this pass unit is, I figure that's probably not a good idea. I can't get it there to Puka underneath. Bolden just missing, second and 10 now. When do they settle for a field goal here? Because if you take too long in this play, it could be the death of you. Second and 10. Fake bring pressure with Evans. I was gonna. I, I was literally trying to say like, Ayers, hold him up. Just hold him up. Don't fucking do anything. Just like grab him and hold him. Like don't fucking do anything. Just grab him and do not move. Pull him towards the middle of the field if anything. Three seconds. They're gonna score here. Unfortunately, I'll call a timeout just to try to do something. It's not gonna do anything. Mainly because we don't have momentum in our direction. Six three here. What a shit half. What a shit half. We do get ball though. So. That is the plus side. Our offense has to come out and do something. If they don't, this game's over. It's going to look like the Pittsburgh Steelers game all over again. Our offense has to get going. If they don't get going in the third quarter, I could very much consider going towards Malik Willis. We do have a return. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Tyler Linton here. See if he can get anything. Let's see if we can get him his first kick return. 
Nope. Okay, offense comes out onto the field at the 27. I'm going to just go straight run plays here. I'm just going to say, fuck it. We can't win in the air right now because of our offense line not being able to hold up. And I was just going to sing their praise this week as well of how well they've been able to hold up over the past couple of weeks. And just nothing going here. Thanks, Dorian Dixon. Thanks for going and getting, getting that safety. I'm so glad you went and got him because, you know, that was important. Second and nine, running it to the right side. Let's see if Goodwill and company can do something spears here getting to the outside edge one man left <sighs> can't quite make john johnson miss up to the 48 though goodwell and company already fucking doing work good job good fucking shit goodwell i fucking love goodwell i was so happy when we drafted him and he has proven me time and time again that that was a correct pick levis rolling scrambling trying to find yards getting out of bounds just not willing to take the hit six yard rush there Staying ahead of the chains. Gets us more rushing yards as well. We go inside zone here. It should be a single unit, yeah, against Aaron. That's going to be tough. Try to cut it back. Nope. Aaron tries to shed too too soon into the inside, and Spears is going to get two there. Not quite what we wanted, but this is such a risky play with how fast these D tackles are. But Spears, catch. Two linemen in front of him. Trying to jet back Juke, not quite there. Michael Carter ending up being able to come up, make a play. I, I And I don't think it's particularly been Will Levis' fault, right? The O-line just hasn't held up today as well. So it, it's been a mixture of things. It's not just Will Levis, unfortunately. Tyler Linton in motion, coming down. And just can't get anything going. I, I tried to scramble to try to get maybe a defender to move. Get off of Josh Wiley maybe a little bit and just nothing going. I, I don't know. It, it's tough to do anything this game. It really is. So just don't get behind the sticks too much. Going to hand off here to Haskins. Up the middle. And just Skaronsky just not, nowhere to be found. Haskins gets five though. Continues to get us into good situations. Haskins, like I said, I would love to bring him back. He's just going to be too much to sign in the negotiation stages. I'll bring him back in free agency. I guarantee you nobody goes after him. I almost guarantee it. Dump off to Oliver here and just can't quite get it to him. Kobe Turner, Turner coming up. Gonna have to settle for three again. Jesus. 6-6 six, six here in the third. That's fucking insane. Okay, 6-6 six, six here in the third. Just not a very impressive game from our offense or their offense to begin with either. Just both. <laughs> everybody's drives stalling out. But our, our defense playing well, and I'm happy with that. You know, I'd rather see our defense play well because I've seen our offense play well. Here's McCreary. Trying to come up with a tackle on Higby. Gets him out of bounds. Second and three now. He's not being able to cover Higby quite far enough on that outside. Wanted to play underneath that receiver. He did. He cut that route off. But Higby open underneath. Covering it. Cup underneath. The D-line trying to get through. Nobody there though. Davidson comes up. Makes a big play on Kyron Williams and Jeffrey Simmons. That That's the injury that could change this game. That's the injury that could very much fucking just shit on this entire game right now. Gonna hop on Florence. Actually, I'm gonna hop on Davidson and help out on Higby. I'm expecting an out route. No, it's a curl. Shire home. Didn't get a sack earlier in the day, but this is a bigger sack. This is a bigger meaning sack. Forcing fourth and 11. They're gonna have to punt the football back to us now. Tyler Linton, please open this game up. Fucking do something. If they give you the chance, go get it done. Gonna return right to left. And they, and, read. Fuck, dude. Come on. If you block that guy, if you hold that guy up for even a second longer, Linton's gone. A Donald tear. He's out for multiple weeks. Okay, can we do anything this drive? I'm, I'm, I, I guess we can just go quick hitters at this point. Just only quick hitters. Tyler Linton out route. Gets the ball to him. 28 just couldn't quite get there. Second and one now. Tyler Linton getting nine there. Going to go PA boot slide here. Roll out. Somebody has to make sure Donald does not break through. Good, good, good. Josh Wiley underneath. Catch, run. Picks up a first. Josh Wiley has been one of my favorite fucking stories of all time through this Tennessee Titans franchise. Burks beats his man. Catch first down. No, nine yards there. Burks just not quite as good of a year as we were hoping, but still. Still, we, we trust him. We trust him with our lives. So, Linton underneath. Give him. No, come on, Levis. That's a fucking easy completion there. Come the fuck on, dude. You have to hit that. You have to hit that. That is not a fucking question. That is not up for debate. That is an easy hit. I understand somebody's kind of in your face. Hit the motherfucker. 
Third and inches. Going to motion over Oliver. Got to win this rep. Third and inches. Downhill. Everybody go. Downhill. Spears. Up to the second level. David Long just barely being able to get enough of a piece of Tajay Spears. Slow him down. Get the other Rams there and involved. Then go half back slip screen here again. To this left side. I would almost, if, if I could in real life, I would almost say, hey, Wiley, stay in. Goodwell, Chip, Donald. Wiley, take the edge. You, you three interior guys, get out there. Getting it to Spears, though. Skaronsky lays a big boom. Spears makes another man miss. Spears not getting a whole ton down, done in the ground game, but in the receiving game, he has played excellently here so far today as well. Going to go half-back stretch here to the strong side. I'm trusting Oliver. I'm trusting Wiley. Goodwill needs to get up to this backer, though. Getting up to the backer. Linton gets a good enough piece of his guy. David Long there, able to scrape across. David Long has been one of their very underrated guys so far today. Coming up multiple times. I know it says only two tackles, but it definitely feels like he's been involved more than that even. So, I mean, you can say what you will, but he's definitely showed up today. Burks, I think, should be able to win his rep here. And then Amos, even, if it's man or if it's or if they send extra pressure, could be an option. I don't see anybody rolling with Levis, trying to find something. Levis picking up the first, though. He at least picked up the first. Try to pump fake and try to get him off, but just nothing. Just They, they stuck to him. I'm going to go... Burks just come on a drag. Just going to roll out to the left. I'm not seeing anything here. Just throw the ball away. Levis, and he still takes a hit from Aaron Donald. That's... Not a good thing. That's not a good thing. We gotta avoid those. That's what gets Will Lovis injured. Just gonna run stick here. See if we can get something. Spread him out. Will Lovis, you ran it before. You're gonna run it again, and he gets tackled down by Donald and Kobe Turner. This time able to read that and get off the, their blocks. We're just gonna go ahead and end the end, let the clock run out. And get to the end of the quarter here. So yeah, six six here. They've definitely had the better passing offense. We've had the better running. Running offense. Just, <laughs> just a defensive matchup here today. It's, it's been fucking boring for me, tr too, trust me. I like Max Smith on this Texas route here. We've had, this is the play that won us the game in Kansas City. So, gonna send Amos on an out route instead of that corner. Just try to get him more involved. Get him a better opportunity here. To bring Tyler Linton down in motion. He's first option here. Max Smith, open touchdown. Max Smith. I think only his ninth reception on the year, but I think he has two touchdowns and over 100 yards now. So, Max Smith, he, I'm telling you, if, if we're not super sold on Bo Melton going forward, I think Max Smith will be a fine player for us. Yeah, because the clock has been running in the third quarter so much, th this part of the video is so short right now. The second half of this video is so short right now because the clock has basically been running the, th the full third quarter because everybody's getting tackled down in bounds as well as just the simple fact of, you know, not a whole ton has happened. There's not been a whole ton of stoppage. There hasn't been scoring or anything like that. So the clock hasn't really been slowing down. Steve Avila now down. So they lose an interior O lineman after we lose an interior D lineman. Going to need this D line to step up here. Somebody go make a fucking play, please. I don't want Davidson back there. I don't know why when I tell them that I want press, it's like, oh, Davidson's going to drop back. No, bring Davidson down as well. Leave him down there. Let him come off that edge even quicker. I don't understand that logic there. I really, really don't. Maybe I'm just confused, I guess. I don't know. Omenihu wins his rep. Can he get home? No. What the fuck is that? Florence, get there. Are you fuck? That is the most all mad and bullshit ass thing I've seen in a long time. What the actual fuck, EA? That's not even, like, excusable. Like, Mahomes can't even pull that off. Here's a good rule of thumb. If Mahomes can't pull it off, it shouldn't be in Madden, I feel like. Simple as that. He, he doesn't even have eyes on him. Like, the Q... Why can't we make it where QBs can't fucking do shit where they don't have eyes on it? And they've already ran play, so I can't go into instant replay. Like, I think that should be a rule of thumb as well. If, the, if Mahomes can't do it, and if their eyes aren't on the receiver, they're not allowed to fucking do it. Simple as that. PA roll out here. And just... <laughs> wow. Fuck it, I'm pulling out the play. I'm pulling it out. I don't care. I know we haven't been able to hold up in protection. I'm going to it. Fuck it. Let's see if we can hit a big play here. Let's see if we can go for it. Let's 
They have an edge matchup on them. I need Tyron Smith to lock up fucking Aaron Donald here right, now, right here, right now. Linton, if Will Levis can get it there. Linton, down the sideline. Touchdown. Fuck you, pussies. Tyler fucking Linton. Let's fucking go. Fuck you, EA. First and 10 at their own 25. Yeah, that, that was a fucking revenge play. I was like, I'm pulling this fucking play out. We need to run it at this point. I'm like, I'm, I'm fucking sick and tired of this shit. They're running the 49ers offense, by the way. That does explain a little bit of this. Puka into the flat, but Shair able to get there. Shair just able to do enough. Get Puka down on the ground. I'm not expecting him to go out there and be able to cover him. Just play safe, scrape sideline to sideline and get there. Like, I'm not telling you to, you have to go shut that motherfucker down. Not being able to hit Puka there on the sideline. 19 for 26, 229, and a touchdown on the day for Stephen Bolden. I think that's... Yeah, Stephen Bolden. Something like that? I think so. Third and 12 now. Dropping into coverage. Got stuck in a random camera. Great. That's always fun. McCreary come up, make the tackle on Cooper Cup. Fourth and nine now. They have to punt the football. There's enough time where you can still punt the football and think that you're going to get the ball back. So... I'm actually going to try something. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go for a block. Fuck it. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm doing it. I don't give a fuck. Bring Florence to the outside edge just a little bit more. Get home. Nope. Okay, now I'm going to try for the block then. Because I'm just going to fair catch with Tyler Linton. No reason to make his average worse. He's had a very good season on the punt returns. And I expect him to be a Pro Bowl punt returner if we don't make the Super Bowl. Four receptions, 102. Yes, most of his yards coming on that big 76-yard catch, but... I just had to do something. I had to, you know, fucking force something. I wanted them to fucking be aware that we can do that. Trying to get this pass game going again. And just, yep, because I step up in the pocket and I go to throw. Kaminsky's right next to him. Just grabs him and pulls him down. That's my fault. That's my fault. That is. I'll, I'll take blame for that. And handoff here. Spears in to the inside. Going to bounce it to the out. No, not quite. They're able to rally just enough. Getting five there, going back to the line, PACL X post. I'm going to send Wiley on a curl. See if we can get something open. Tyler Linton open again, catch up the sideline, and just, I don't know who who that is. I don't know who 95 is. Is that Kaminsky? Yeah, that's Kaminsky. Kaminsky's 95, Hoyt's 91. I'm getting so confused by them right now. First and 10, going to hand off inside. Dorian Dixon just... Kind of shield Aaron Donald. You don't need to beat him to the inside. And, of course, you try to fucking beat him to the inside. Like, literally in that situation, as an offensive line, you should be aware in that situation. Your coach has probably went over this. If you're going up against that type of dude, what you would want to do is get a first quick step to the le to your left to beat him to the inside. And then you would want to basically make him think that it's a pass and try to push him upfield. Like, let him go upfield. Is the thing. Not let him beat you across your face. Second and ten now. Hand off Spears. And they're just coming for it at this point. Spears now down. Spears gets up. But apparently his chest is hurting him. Okay. Third and eleven. I don't need to force anything here. Is the thing. As well. I'm going to have Haskins just sit on a smoke screen. There's no point in him running a streak. Legitimately no point. Underneath is Burks. Wiley though on this over route. Gets a first down and more. Keeps the clock moving. I'm going to run this fucking jailbreak screen again. With them having so many defensive backs on the field, I think we can get it to work. Catch there to, and just nobody picking up the linebacker. Again, I don't know. Max Smith has had three re three receptions, five yards, and a touchdown. That's nice. <laughs> He's had two screen passes ending in technically two yards and a, and a fucking Texas route resulting in three yards and a touchdown. That's insane. Second and 10. Dropping back to pass, trying to find something. Wiley, technically, no, it gets knocked in the air. Third and 10. It's kind of like that Jerome Bettis stat line where it's like, what was it, two rushes, negative one yards, two touchdowns, or some shit like that. Or or a touchdown, or three rushes, negative one yard, two touchdowns. Some, 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 something of that nature. I don't know the exact stat line off the top of my head. Third and 10, though. Back to pass. Haskins beats his man on this out route. Picks up the first and more, shrugging off one tackle, and getting down to the 15. I would like him to stay in bounds there to get to the two-minute warning, but getting the first down helps even more. First and 10. Gonna run to this right side here, Wiley. I trust Goodwell and Wiley to win their rep there, and Haskins getting 
four there. Three for 13. Still staying above that four-yard average is where we want him. Two-minute warning here in Nashville. I don't want Spears in. I really fucking don't want Spears in at this point in the game. First and foremost, we're going to be running in between the tackles. We're going to be running downhill. There's no point in having him in at this point, as well as the fact of the matter that he is coming off of injury. No thank you. Get the fuck off the field. I do not need you right now. Haskins should be able to work just fine. We, he's proven it before. If you can get into the end zone, get into the end zone. If, but if not, stay in bounds at least. Haskins downhill picks up another four yards there. Going to go half back gut here. Downhill. Everybody go. Everybody downhill. We're going to bring Linton in motion. No, it doesn't even bring him really in motion. Get him back to the, out, the outside. Just make the Rams defense think. Haskins downhill into the end zone. Touchdown. We'll go up two scores here. Haskins. Haskins, such an underrated part of this offense. He has performed time and time again. So, Rams offense has to get going something going here. Defense didn't come up for him, so they have to get a drive going. They have to go down and score quickly. First and ten, they need two touchdowns. Our defense is going to be in this, you know, conservative state, and Higby not being able to hold on there. Concert, basically a concentration drop there. That's on him. That is really on him there. That is tough. That basically just, like, fucked your whole drive. If you started off hot there, I couldn't imagine how well that would have went. You tear and Keenan McIntyre. Wow. So the the tackle that we didn't think we were going to have super great success against now has three sacks put up on him because, you know, Wesley has two and now Keenan has two when going against, has one going against him. So kind of crazy. Osa Digizua trying to get there and there's Quentin Ayers. It's going to be a pick six, a walk-in pick six. Oh, the O-lineman almost got there. In real life, they would have given up. Like, that O-lineman's not going to try to track that right there. He's like, oh, Ayers is 10 yards away. He's going to walk in. Like, so, unfortunately, we can't celebrate all the way into the end zone, but still. But holy shit. Yeah, just not doing good there. Quentin Ayers undercuts that route, runs it for better than Cooper Cup, gets the pick, takes it all the way back. Quentin Ayers coming up big. Besides that one big play to Cooper Cup, you know, he played pretty well. It's hard to imagine that this game is just, it was 6-6 six, six at half. Now, yes, it's kind of imaginable for the Rams, right? They've only scored seven, but now we are up 28 points since halftime. So it's kind of crazy just thinking about it being like, wow, we just went on a 20 point, 28 point scoring, you know, run throughout these last two quarters since half. It, it's, it's kind of crazy. Now, of course, yes, part of it is the defense coming up big with a pick. Von Florence, you're underneath that ball. You have to go get that, I feel like. Can't look at it because we're in hurry up. Nice. Yeah, no. yeah, just not letting me see it. Okay. I was going to go see if he was actually fully underneath that ball or if I'm just imagining things. And Derek Wesley with his third sack sets Havenstein up for that outside rush and cuts back in. Hovering underneath, Kyron underneath, and Wesley again! <laughs> He's going to only get half a sack, though. Third and 19, and they finally call their last timeout. God, I almost want to put Keenan over there to give him a chance to go against Havenstein. Havenstein just not having a good day today. Going to be on the out, going to be on the end, going to beat just everywhere. Third and 19. Don't let anything up too big. And he's going to throw the ball away, ending their day on an incompletion here. I would assume they'll... No, they're going to go for it. Okay. I'm just going to stack up in mid-blitz zero. Fuck it. you got to get the ball out quick. I think my defense can win. Let's let's go. Let's. I'm, I'm being serious. Let's go. Fourth and 19. Mid-blitz O. Go. All the defensive linemen, go. McCreary, pick! In front of Puka. Can't quite get turned around, though, because I pushed triangle too many times. First and 10. Roger McCreary. We'll just kneel this ball out. Actually, we're going to give Haskins another shot at it. Fuck it. We got to get rushing yards anyway, right? So give him a couple more opportunities. Fuck it. As many places we can get done, we'll get done. Haskins getting some yards there. I, I don't give a fuck. Fuck fuck the Rams. This is long-term development for us. Second and three now. Running the outside here. We're going to actually motion. If, if this corner doesn't follow Burks, he does. I'm going to snap it anyway. Fuck it. Haskins in the middle of the field now. Getting another good run there. Six yards. I almost want to just fucking throw a deep ball just to see if we can get it, but I don't feel like throwing a pick. 
especially with how good Will Levis has played so far this season. So it just doesn't make sense for us. We're going to hand the ball off again. Haskins up the middle, getting some yards there. 10 yards, 12, 13 even. 8 for 51 on the day for him. So I think we will be over that 100-yard mark, maybe even 150-yard mark as a team, but not as good of a day on the ground as I thought we were going to have. But still, the offense came alive in that second half just enough to really put, separate us from the Rams, and then our defense continued to shut down that Rams offense. You know, we're we're one stupid, illegitimate EA fuckery play away from shutting them down to six again, shutting another team down under ten. You know, we're, because, you know, he's rolling to his left. He spins, throws off back foot, and throws a dot to Puka over the top of the defense. It's just kind of crazy. Like I said, not a big day for the offense, just, but, you know, not every game is going to be an offensive output. Yes, 34 points is still a lot in the NFL, but it was more just upon, you know, that big play to Tyler Linton to get us into the right momentum and then just a good march and defense coming up big. All that fun stuff. What a fucking game from Derek Wesley. I was going to have him probably as the thumbnail anyway. He probably just guaranteed himself that with three and a half sacks on the day. What a fucking game from the defense, though, coming up big. So what's even weirder after looking at the stats for the game is actually we scored all 28 points in the fourth. We didn't even score 28 points in the, in the half. We scored 28 points in the fourth. And it was... And I don't think it was actually 6-6 going into half now that I'm thinking about it. I think it was 6-3 going into half. So that's even crazier that how low that score was going into halftime and just how well we played in that second half. Now, of course, yes, them being down and having to throw the football and us getting that pick six really does help, but still. Trench boost, we do have an injury to take care of as well, and then we'll be looking ahead at the Jaguars game going into next week. Another impressive week from the O-line. 150 to 199 yards rushing. They're getting some good XP to go along with that. So they will be able to get some upgrades for them as well. Like I said, one new injury. We do have Jeffrey Simmons going out on injury. I don't know if we'll do anything in terms of roster movement with him being out. I think we'll probably just have to let it play. We And then once Bo Melton's back, we'll be able to drop that receiver and maybe bring in somebody else on that defensive line if we need to at that point. But, you know, of course, that's still a week away with you know, us being able to sim to the Jaguars week and then having, and then once we do play the Jaguars game, then we'll have only one more week until Bo Melton's back. Well, we'll have him back after the Jaguars game, so we'll have him back for the Panthers game at minimum. So let's go ahead and sim and see what's up with the AFC South. We are 10 and 1. We do have firm control over the AFC right now. 6 and 6 Jags. We did beat them earlier this season. We did smack the living fuck out of them. We do have a breakout linebacker. Could be Derek Wesley, could be D Derek McIntyre, could be somebody else. Um, weekly strategy, of course, upgrade players, manage staff, all that fun stuff we'll see in the next week. Show you guys some screenshots that I took. Um, just, you know, some of the better players. I wish I would have gotten the celebration of Keenan McIntyre and Derek Wesley celebrating a sack, but fuck it, got some other ones. I didn't really care about, you know, highlighting players that got picks, just getting some... You know, fun-looking snapshots. I always like to get those at the end of games as well. Tajay Spear, Spears still up there in rushing leaders. And so, and I would assume Derek Wesley's not that far off in terms of getting into the sack leaderboards, right? 11 is the third guy. He has 10 and a half. He is, he's like, like fifth or fourth in the league. Derek Wesley with 10.5, Keenan McIntyre with 7.5, Jeffrey Simmons won't be able to get many more going into the end of the season, but our rookie edge rushers stepping up, Amenehu with 3, Osa Degizua with 3.5, Shair with 2.5, Demonte Jones with 1.5, Keenan Evans with 1. Wow. Just Derek Wesley has, like I said, we needed edge rushing help, and we went out and drafted him for a fucking reason, and he has done exactly what we needed to. And to, and to think, I didn't want him. I wanted a different guy because he was going to be a better overall out the gate. Derek Wesley has impressed me, to say the least. If you guys enjoyed this video or any of the videos here on my channel, please stick around and subscribe. I don't know when all the rookies are going to be done for my draft class. If you guys are here looking for that, I don't know when those are going to be done. I'll get them done whenever I get them done. It, they're six and seventh round rookies. It doesn't really matter all that much. Not really. But with that being said, guys, like I said, if you guys enjoyed this video or any of the videos like this here on my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys do stick around and subscribe. I'll be back with more videos like this, whether it's franchise, rebuilds, roster updates, Bears content, anything like that. But 
With that being said, I'm out. Peace.